the town of Farmington. Respecting history, planning the future. Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the Farmington Town Council meeting and ask you to join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'd ask for public comment, and if you'd like to address the council, come to the podium. You have five minutes, and just give your name and address, please. tonight because I would like some clarification as far as videotaping these meetings and the Board of Education meetings. Um, these are taped, but the Board of Education are not. Is that correct? Or do you, do you not know? They're both taped, but they don't tape public comment. Public comment. comment. Um, either one? No, ours is taped. Ours okay. is, our so whole meeting is taped. Uh, um, here is because I'm trying to amicably resolve some issues that I'm having with the school district. Um, and I've been told the only way to resolve them is to file a lawsuit against Farmington, a federal lawsuit, a CHRO complaint, the Board of uh, the State of Connecticut Department of Education, or a state lawsuit. And I'm trying to I'm trying to find out what the chain of command is. Is if the Board of Education is ignoring my daughter's civil rights? She's African American, by the way. She's black, and um, she's been having a lot of issues because she has 15 study halls in her um, junior year, and I've been trying to resolve it with the school, and they won't do anything because of our, our extensive history. And, um, you know, they've done a lot of passive-aggressive things. They've retaliated against me. I filed a complaint about something that happened at Union School. Um, it was a derogatory picture of what appeared to be his teacher gave. I should have brought it with me so that you could see the picture. She gave him a picture that appeared to be a penis in the mouth. And I filed a complaint with DCF, then Union School retaliated against me and filed a complaint against my son's um, you know, uh, attendance. And when DCF got it, they looked at it and they realized that I was correct because my son had been getting bullied. So because of that complaint at Union School, we believe that they're being we retaliating against me with my daughter, because this is with her it's been ongoing. Um, and how could a child you know, have three study halls per day? And they're telling me, oh, we don't have any classes for her. And I don't want to lose my temper because I want to, um, you know, it's her junior year. I want her to have a future, and I'm trying to work with them. But they won't do anything to help me. So it's like, what do I do? Just, you know, go, go the legal route, which I'm doing now. But it feels like I'd rather do it amicably so they don't continue to retaliate against her because I'm concerned about her, you know. Um, and it's not fair to give, you know, a child that many study halls, not to mention I've complained about internal segregation at um, Chef versus O'Neill. I, I volunteer at the NAACP. I'm on their legal redress committee. Um, I was at the NAACP fundraiser Friday night. Um, we, know, we met a lot of politicians. We talked to them. And people that spoke to me realized, they said, you know, you have a problem. You have to solve it. No child, whether she's black, white, or Hispanic, or whatever, should have that many study halls. And, you know, they're guilty of vicarious liability. You know, they're violating state and federal laws. They're discriminating against my child. But I believe genuinely that it's because of me and my um, aggressive nature. I'm very forthcoming. You know, I'm not, I don't keep my mouth, I've seen the, um, you know, every year there's 20 African American kids in, in her sophomore year. They're always together. They're educated together. I filed several complaints last year. One teacher never showed up. So the child, one of the kids in her class tried to jump out of the window. I told Bill Silva, I constantly, I call him, the guy never calls me, he never returns my calls, he, he doesn't communicate with me, and I'm trying to do this amicably, and because they want to age her out of the school district on it without a proper, you know, fair or equal education, I'm frustrated. And I feel like, you know, a lot of other parents have the same issues. They have to fight for their children to get classes, but why should minorities have to fight so hard? This is supposed to be a fair, I mean, I've read your policies, I read all your biographies before I came here. You know, I know you're an attorney, by, and, I, and I, I've read all your biographies because I wanted to know your backgrounds. And I think that you should be able to hopefully advocate for me, or I mean, should I just continue doing what I'm doing? I mean, what's your opinion? 
Or well, let me just say, when public comment is to comment to the right. or the, to the council, right, but I read, we don't we don't have a back and forth now. Right. But, so then, okay. Well, let me ask you this last question. Well, so the Board of Education doesn't answer to anybody. They're independent. So if I file the lawsuit, it doesn't concern you, but it's still town money. You know what I mean? So I would think you'd be interested to try to advocate to resolve it amicably. You know, and that's my that's the issue that I have is like I'm trying to do it for my daughter's future so that she gets the classes that she needs. Even if I have to pay for the class, she wants personal finance, she wants certain classes. If I have to pay for them and they won't give it to her, I'll do it during the summer. But with 15 study halls, there's plenty of room to add something. And that, that's my frustration. I thought you guys should know this so that maybe you can communicate with Kathy Breeder, Lori Singer, whoever is involved in the issue, or Bill Silva. And, you know, just say, hey, all this person wants is for her daughter to have, you know, um, classes to fill her, her slots. I mean, it's not fair. And like I said, I'm extremely frustrated, but I'm trying to do it at the lowest level possible. But I'm not getting anywhere. So that's it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Kurt Crowland from 37 Redcoat Lane. Uh, I just have three items. Uh, first, it's been over three months since the high school referendum did not pass on June 15th. Can you please give us an update on any steps the town council has taken to address the high school deficiencies? <coughs> number two, <coughs> number two, the town council voted on July 11th to request the resignation of Justin Bernier from the building committee. Can you please give us an update on the status of that request? Number three, many people have voiced their concerns during public comment and via email about John Landry's PAC and the use of misinformation to mislead the public during both the high school referendum and the pub, uh, Republican primary campaigns. I've yet to hear a public reply from Mr. Landry, a current town council member, or any of the other members of this faction. I feel that senior citizens are especially susceptible to misinformation since his PAC is funded primarily by retirees and non-residents. I believe we deserve an explanation from Mr. Landry and the other members of this PAC. According to SEC Form 20, thousands and thousands of dollars were reimbursed to Mr. Landry directly by his PAC. And I believe these disclosures need to be made public. Thanks. Any other public comment? Yes, please. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Amanda Strauss, and I live at 16 Townsend Road. And I'd like to discuss an agenda item for tonight, which are the lights. Uh, <coughs> the LED lights, the replacement the addition or replacement, I'm not sure which one it is, of light poles, as well as the conversion to LED lights. Um, so basically my position is that I object to this on a number of, a number of, for a number of reasons. One is an incandescent light bulb has a Kelvin output of 2400 Kelvin. Um, that means it contains far less blue, is it, Whose computer? Is this somebody's laptop? I'm sorry, it's mine. I can move it. Please. Yes, please. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry. Okay. It contains far less blue and far more yellow and uh, red wavelengths uh, than what does a halogen or an incandescent bulb. The white LEDs that are being retrofitted throughout the country have two problems according to the American Medical Association. The first is discomfort and glare. Uh, blue light scatters more in the human eye than the longer wavelengths of the yellow and red, and obviously I'm reading directly from the AMA's uh, quotes. <coughs> and that can damage the retina. If you would like to see how that uh, Appears you can, uh, I was going to say you have two examples, but now you have three because there's LED lights here around the school. You can stare into the light of your washing machine if you have any of the LED lights that come on and you can see how much glare that produces. Uh, some of you wear glasses, some of you don't. I'm assuming none of us in this room is uh, 
has cataracts. It's of an age to have cataracts, although who knows. Um, but all of this causes glare on the windshield uh, and into the eyes. Um, and it is really becoming a major problem throughout uh, cities and towns within the country. I object to the conversion of the LED for that reason, as well as for the reason that it's, it's used primarily in high crime traffic areas where you need an excessive amount of light. By placing them here in Farmington, you produce a um, ambiance or give off the effect of that there might be a crime situation here in town. In addition to which, we are trying to preserve some of the beauty of the town of Farmington, some of the historic value of the town of Farming, Farmington. And some of the decisions that I've been seeing that have been made from a design standpoint are compromising that situation. Um, I have no idea what the new, that, that takes care of the, the bulbs and I'm certainly happy to discuss the Calvins with anybody in more detail if they choose at a later date. Uh, you're also welcome to call me about that. But the structure of the lights themselves, I have no idea what they look like, so I can't specifically comment on them, but I can specifically comment on the lights that are on the bridge on Route 4, and if there's if they're supposed to look like that, I don't know, but it is not historically accurate to not only this era, this country, <laughs> uh, much less the fact that these are commercial, lower socioeconomic lights from back in London, back in the 1700s. So I think there needs to be a cohesive design statement for the town, or a cohesive mission statement de you know, depicting the design. And I would, again, truly discourage the use of LED lights. I understand that it saves uh, money as far as the expenses of the, of the electrical output, but you also have the upfront cost. And more importantly, sometimes you do have to compromise a bit on money when it comes to the entire ambiance and look of the town. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Other public comment? OK. Uh, we will move on to D1, Explore Farmington. Rose. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to, to be here with many of you. And um, I know many of you have been receiving updates over the past about nine months concerning this initiative that the Economic Development Commission has embarked on. But I thought that tonight we would give you guys the first peek at it. Um, we're very excited about it. And um, we figured you guys should be the first adopters, so to speak. So, <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> yes, we hope so, too. So um, I thought I would start off by just giving you a little bit of a review, just to make sure we're all on the same page. And um, the Economic Development Commission has the ability to really have very good feedback about how our businesses are feeling, how our residents are, and that's done through a robust business visitation program. Um, and we visit about 12 businesses a month at least. And so when you visit these businesses, you're able to really ask them what's working, what isn't working, what do you wish for? And it became very clear that a lot of uh, challenges that maybe some of us are having are have been tied to the way we communicate. Um, I think many of us realize that, I thought I was gonna have my little cell phone with me, but I forgot it. I'm not of the area that I don't go anywhere without it. But most of us have this little cell phone and that's what we are tied to. And that's the way we're communicating now. <coughs> so many times I would visit a business and they would say, you know, we have a lot of new employees, but they're not from Farmington. 
They're not from Connecticut. In fact, some of them are not even from the United States. So how can we make sure that these new employees are connecting to our community? How do we make sure they know about the Hillstead? They know where to get the best pizza. They know how to get a babysitter and things of that nature. And in the past, uh, a town many times had um, a guide that they would print, but those guides very quickly became obsolete. They weren't current. A restaurant may close, a new store may open, and so the printing of them, and a lot of us aren't walking around anymore with maps or with guides for that matter. So it became apparent to us, uh, the Economic Development Commission, that we should do something, that something needed to be done. We wanted to make sure our community was really engaged and as, as well as our business community. So we sent out um, a request for proposal. Well, we actually contacted eight local PR marketing firms. And we asked them to submit some proposals to us. Of the um, eight that we had, three chose not to uh, give us a proposal because they just felt our budget was a little bit uh, limited given what we were asking. But we did receive five excellent proposals and of the five the commission chose the top two. We had them come in and be interviewed and I'm happy to say they unanimously recommended to our town manager that Civic Lift with um, its creator Evan Dobis should be the one to, to help us solve this dilemma. So uh, Evan came back and met with um, our town manager and also um, our staff from her office, Anna and Kat, who are, as you could see, one of our most energetic and youngest employees. So they are very <laughs> adept at all this. I'm learning so much from them. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that they're helping um, uh, make sure this initiative goes off to a, a great start. So um, we agreed and Evan was hired and uh, Evan is a creator of Civic Lift, which is a, um, a firm which is really helping all municipalities. Their goal is to make sure that they have good communication channels with uh, using what all of us are using right now in terms of communication, um, that little phone. So without any further ado, Evan, if you would come up and uh, Give the council a little bit of an overview. Sure. Oh, my pleasure. Can I sit up here? So uh, thank you, Rose, for the introduction. Good evening, thank you for having me here today. Um, as she said, my name's Evan Dobis. I'm the founder of Civic Lift, and I've been working with Rose and Anna and Kat uh, for the past few weeks, um, <clears throat> trying to essentially harness the many things that Farmington has to offer. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so when I say harness, I mean uh, finding out everything that is happening in town the assets that you have here, the resources that you have, and basically improving the visibility of them. So directing them toward through a channel that is that Rose referred to, you know, the way the modern citizen expects it. So, and what I mean by that is, you know, um, uh, websites online and on your mobile devices. So, um, and we're talking, you know, the the assets in town are. I'm thinking are. You know, interesting places to eat, the events that your local businesses are having, um, the many options for an afternoon getaway, fun things to do with your family. You know, the good thing is, is that there is no lack of those things in Farmington. Farmington is full of them already. And um, what is lacking is the awareness of just how much there is. So if we take a step back for a minute, we can think of all the moving parts that make up the community. We have events and schools and uh, businesses, park and rec, town hall. There's a lot, and not only that, they each probably have their own website or maybe their own communication channel. Maybe they're using newspapers. So what you will notice is that the information is there, but it's quite fragmented and it's hard to access. Are we gonna ask residents and visitors to hunt down all of these sources of information to keep themselves informed? That's pretty unlistic. Because it's kind of silly to say, but as Rose touched on, 
Um, the technology is so good and everything is so accessible now that community information doesn't really, it struggles to hold up with that standard. So it's, <coughs> it's just a matter of uh, connecting this information and putting it where people want it. Um, the truth is the modern citizen himself and informs himself in a different way and so communities also need to change as well. So what Civic Lift does is it takes all of the <coughs> moving parts and it creates a single cohesive channel and it makes it much easier for the modern citizen to consume and much more in line with how they expect to find information. Um, it's online, it's on the mobile device and it's uh, all based on their personal preferences. So it's a challenge when residents don't know where to go for that one single source of community info because it usually doesn't exist. And when information is hard to find, um, it's, it usually ends up uh, not involving uh, residents enough to, to discover it. And it has an unfortunate effect on the local economy. The solution that we've come up with is, it's kind of like a new breed of an infrastructure so to speak, um, specifically put in place for community engagement. So we can leverage Farmington's existing assets and qualities and improve its visibility by promoting it through the channels that people are already using. And we need to do all this while keeping in mind the personality of Farmington and matching the local culture, so to speak, and um, being a part of it uh, and giving the adequate control to you, the people who actually live and work here. So what we, Rose, Anna, Catherine, and I um, are building is we're trying to create an a, a environment that serves up its own opportunities. Uh, once we've achieved this tipping point, we can expect a significant increase in community activity um, to attract new businesses and to improve the connection by improving the flow of information. So does it work? Well, I've been at this for a good four years now. and. Before now, I was running essentially prototypes and trying to prove my own concept. And we had five Connecticut towns that uh, went along with our um, prototype. And so we had a lot of ability to test and find features that worked and um, get a lot of feedback from our users. And so what we've created now is the result of all of that exposure. and. Uh, what we came up with is um, a piece of software that is proving to have a pretty significant um, level of engagement. So in those five towns, we average 68% of their population becoming users of the site within the first year. And a lot of the reason why I think this is so, um, this is picking up so much steam is because the traditional approach for a web design company, for example, would spend all the time building out this website and building out the asset. And then, and then it's the build it and they will come mentality. But us, we have the platform, so that allows us to focus specifically on promoting this platform because that's what's really going to get people to come to the site over and over. And so people began to use these sites regularly, in some cases daily. Um, businesses had the perfect channel to reach their neighbors. They were, they were all over this and they promoted their events, their locations, and it was all free for them to do so. So um, the more they submitted, the more the community visited the website. So it was just this really nice snowball effect. So uh, as I said, we've been building uh, the new software and uh, the town of Farmington being the innovative forward thinking pioneers that you are. <laughs> um, you're gonna be the first town to, to have the new platform. And uh, thanks to the Farmington Economic Development, um, we are happy to launch explorefarmington.com, which will be launching on November 1st, and uh, powered by Civic Lift. So, as you said, this is kind of the opening for you guys right now. Um, you can actually go to explorefarmington.com right now. And... <laughs> Does anybody you coming up here, Kathy? I can help okay. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can help you. <laughs> I think you better go. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go in? Okay. Evan, while they're getting on, can you tell us what five communities sort of beta tested this for you? Sure. Uh, it was Torrington, New London, Kent, uh, New Milford, and Tosin. Thanks. So there's yeah. a lot of driving throughout those years. They were all over the state. <laughs> 
So you'll see that we have uh, a place where you could submit your email address. <laughs> there was an open one with no password. <coughs> Is everybody in? Uh, no. Oh, okay. We'll wait. <laughs> they didn't. I just almost finished. Like, Does anybody, anybody have any email. questions in the meantime? That I they, they should go to the um, get early access. Yeah, the button we're trying to get to here is the on the bottom. Get, get early. Get early access button. That's the button we opened up for you. So, clicking on that will take you to a sign up page. So an email comes to us. Uh, did you sign up for the newsletter? I, uh, on top there. I guess so. Yeah. Let's try. Go. I don't have my glasses on. Got it. Okay. No. <laughs> Thinker. This one's Wi Fi. So yeah. Anyone's on Wi Fi. I'm good at switching to data. I'm in the right spot. <laughs> you were supposed it's to think. Slow, it's gone. Yeah. Oh, there I am. No, I just. Yeah. Push that. Do we sign all on? Yes. So, bank an account? Yep. Yeah. Relay that. Yeah. Your accounts. So one of the benefits of this particular site is that all of you will make an account and then that will allow you to upload information right on the site. So it's not going to require a large amount of staff to keep up this site. I like the pop-up. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's me. I'm typing to you right now. <laughs> I'm on it. Uh, so what, what this is, what you're seeing, there's going to be a two-phase rollout for this website. And right now we just started the first phase. And, and what we call this is the content rally. So everybody can submit the content, but nobody's going to see the front side of the site first. On November 1st, and it's during the time between then and now, is when we're going to try to get the site full of content. So that when we launch on November 1st and we make a big public deal out of it and we promote it, that it's going to be a full site the, f the second our re uh, your residents get to it. Everybody doing it? Getting in? We're good. Yeah, great. So you should see two two options right now: submit your business and submit your email. Right. <laughs> Clicking on those is just filling out an online form. So I believe you know Rose and I are going to be reaching out to other business owners in town now that it's been open. You know, encourage them to submit content, and then we'll be able to um, to launch with a very full site, an engaging site, right off the bat on November first. <clears throat> How is the access controlled? Like, for instance, you know, Joe, random person, signs up and then just puts in random events like block party or something? Good question. And that's actually what I'm getting to All right. right next, right up here. So now, we, uh, now that we mentioned we're launching on the first, I'd like to focus on the collaboration effort between Civic Lift and the town of Farmington. Um, there are usually two two aspects to launching projects like these that cause the failures. There's been a lot of, uh, actually a lot of towns will say, why do we need another website? And the reason why is because um, there is no cohesion between the efforts, right? So the top two reasons for project failure, first off is lack of content. It's, it's the reason why people go to Facebook every, you know, three times a day, maybe even more, because there's content always changing. Um, but what, what, what's also like Facebook is that we uh, don't actually create any of the content ourselves, we just have the platform. So as people submit the content, we then um, can also offer a curation or moderation. So Anna and Catherine here are actually taking on the role of reviewing everything, every piece of content <coughs> submitted before applying it live on the site. So nothing will get through that we don't want to be there. So we have this moderation process. How do you develop the standards of that? It's very subjective. Yeah. So Civic Lift, we have our own standards, but we can also imply uh, standards that we've created ourselves. They actually wrote um, terms and terms of use conditions. And yes, it, it's difficult to come up with because you, it has to be, you know, it's binary, yes or no. So um, there's some edge cases that we've uh, we've pretty much accounted for, um, but 
you know, once the users really start to use it, there also probably will be some level of case-by-case -case basis just we, to make sure. Well, I was going to say, is that a process right. in itself? Right. As, as, the, yeah. as people go on and as it's used, then you'll have to go in and say, hey, wait a minute, we didn't realize that would come on, and now right. we've got to... Yeah, we, we have can't some, allow that. Right. We have some standard policies that we're That's developing right now, and then we've made it very clear that the policies are subject to change. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. as we, you know, we have some basic rules that we think are good, mm -hmm. and then we'll move from there, you know, depending on how it goes. Yeah, this is a constant, as I said, a constant collaboration between uh, Civic Lift and Farmington. And, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the examples is an out-of-business, an out-of-town business wants to submit their business listing to Farmington site because they're in their footprint. But, you know, that's, that's one of those things where you have to say, no, you know, you're not, you know, the business in Farmington, this is just for Farmington residents. So that was an edge case that we took care of. That, that showed up early and then we took care of. The other thing you may want to do, in addition to just touching base with our attorney, is once we have standards, they should be on your site. So oh, people, no, that, yeah, so people no. know that we're not oh, right. discriminating right. on one group or another because Mm -hmm. There's there's right, a there's right, a yeah. Pandora box oh, that no, can be that, opened. That's here. exactly what our plan yeah. is. Yeah. So what we've done so far, um, we have uh, we meet weekly, and we've been doing so since um, I think June, I believe we've been meeting. Yeah. And so a lot of that was developing all the different policies and procedures, and then um, we will once we have finished that, we which it's almost all done. And so then, uh, obviously, our town attorney is going to look it over. And then it's going to be part of the site itself. Uh, right now, you can't go on the site without agreeing to the terms and conditions of civic lift. And then that will also be our terms and condition. And uh, we wanted to do it that way, because that way, everyone's on the same page. We all know what the rules are. And we can, because I think in the beginning, if you submit an event and then in the morning you're waiting for your event to pop up and it hasn't popped up, you're going to be receiving a message. We're sorry, but your event cannot be posted at this time. Please call us or, you know, if you have any questions. And then we will always be able to refer back to those policies and procedures. So that's a game plan. <laughs> you had a covered road. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's an important question and one that we have struggled with. Every single week, like we think of something else. I'm like, what if? And so it's been interesting to see how it has developed over time. And, and I fully expect that once it goes live, we will continue to evolve, you know, as the circumstances dictate. And yep. you probably don't need to reinvent the wheel. I assume there are other similar things. You can talk to other towns and learn a little bit from them so we're not starting you know, ground. Well, I, I went ahead and, you know, Google terms. And, I, I Googled terms and conditions on websites, and then it had this whole thing on um, this is not, we are not medical professionals. Do not take this as medical advice. And I'm like, oh, we hadn't put the medical part in there. So now we're adding that to it. So we are really. <laughs> This is why nobody reads them. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, thanks. Yeah, yeah we, and we learned a lot, especially about this, um, you know, the curator model, making sure it's moderated from these prototypes that we launched. Because at first it was, it was a little too open. And, you know, we saw some things that were coming in that probably shouldn't qualify as an, an event, for example. Uh, one business, they were having a a month-long sale, and so they submitted an event every day of the month as if that was a, a community <laughs> event, but if we open it up to that, then it's yes. just going to be... never-ending. Yeah, right. it's going to be never-ending, and nobody's going to use it because it's just going to be overwhelming. So it's the curator part, an aspect of it. Not only is it a moderation thing, but it's also a promotion thing. We're going to be working with them to promote the site. You know, um, we've made a Facebook page already. Um, we're, and Instagram. It, Instagram, yeah, there, and uh, if there is younger uh, than us, <laughs> <laughs> is it Insta, Finsta, or Insta? Sorry, <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and um, uh, you know, when an, an exciting piece of content comes in, for example, maybe we'll promote it through Facebook, and so that ongoing promotion and the ongoing aspect that it's always relevant content to that moment in time. I think will be a really compelling aspect, uh, a really compelling reason to go to this site every day potentially, and um, and of course, and this kind of brings me to my uh, to the next reason for project failure. <coughs> of course, everybody knows is one lack of funding, but this is where it gets really interesting for me and for us because 
uh, not only does Civic Lift offset its own costs, but if we all stand behind this site officially and uh, collaborate together and promote explorefarmington.com together, uh, we can actually make it profitable for Farmington. And so how do we do that? This is through um, our ROI program. The ROI program is essentially a built-in sustainability model. Um, I've, my background is in web design. I've launched many sites without any type of sustainability model to it. And sustainability is both relating to content and, of course, the funds required to keep, it, keep the site going. So how this works for uh, uh, explorefarmington.com is the site itself has numerous revenue generating features on it one of which is the premium business listing. So a, any business could submit a, their listing for free. If they wanted to upgrade their presence on our site, they can actually pay for a premium business listing. So the revenue, gener uh, there's also uh, sponsorship opportunities that we've opened up for businesses. So any uh, of the revenue generated from these uh, features are, is actually split with Farmington, with the town. So, <clears throat> The more activity on the site, the more profits there are to share. And this is how your commitment um, to getting behind explorefarmington.com really pays off. Because, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and we're here to work with you since Civic Lift won't be creating content ourselves. As I said, we get to spend time on promotion and making sure everybody uh, knows it exists, making it a household name essentially for residents of Farmington. And uh, everyone inv uh, that makes everyone involved uh, you know, a beneficiary. Uh, the town of Farmington itself, the users of the site, and uh, as a result, we create our own sustainability. And in this way, Civic Lift can end up paying for itself, and once it does, we aren't going to just stop once the site's paid for. We're going to continue to share the, the, the revenues, the profits uh, with you, and actually, oh, and the goal is to make this an actual profitable thing. So those are the business concepts. Um, I can actually pull up a demonstration of what the site will look like if, if we still have time for that. Um, it's up to yes. the council. Yeah, I think what would be helpful is just kind of, I, I think that's what you just said, just showing how this works, like yeah. give a sample of, you know, how it works, what people are posting, things of that nature. Certainly. <clears throat> just a quick, um, sure. we talked about this, the breakfast. So it's a $5,000 upfront fee that the economic um, development committee is paying for. Then you get half of whatever the, um, the upgrade is. Well, the, but is there a yearly fee too? Uh, is yes. Five thousand every year. It, it, it's it's eight thousand dollars, and then the goal is to um, first of all, every everything is free on the site, so all mm -hmm. businesses will have the opportunity to have a completely free listing. Right. If they choose to do premium listing, which we. Uh, chose a, a very reasonable amount, $250 uh, a year. And what a business will receive then is actually their own website on our site. So they're f on the map, as you'll see in a little while, their, their little icon will be a little bit larger. And a regular business listing, a free business listing, will pop up the name of the store and a telephone number and an address. Yeah, that's right there. Uh, so it's a title, a short description, and then contact information and hours of operation. Right, but a premium listing for the 250 a year not only will give you an image, a little bit more information, but then that particular business will also have, in essence, a dedicated web, a page. Dedicated web page. So especially we have uh, quite a number of small businesses in town, and they may not have the ability to design their own website, have their own website, or pay to host their own website. So this will really be very helpful. And so um, at the $250 level, we would only need 60 businesses in town and we have 2,000 to go premium and then the site pays for itself. And it's a yearly 8,000? Yes. And it's a yearly, uh, a yearly fee for the premium listing as well. Mm -hmm. And we haven't even spoken about the sponsorship opportunities yet. Right. We have already been approached by a number of people. We do not want this to be filled with ads. So we will not be having any ads on the site. But we will have some sponsorship opportunities. For example, on the front page, um, you'll see that it has in pretty 
big letters Explore Farmington. So we are, you know, developing different levels of sponsorship that it could be Explore Farmington brought to you by company ABC. And, and so those types of sponsorships will go all the way back to uh, a fund to be able to continue this um, and, and it could sustain itself. Now, when you say a company will have their own website within the website, do you really just mean it's more of a detailed listing for that company? It's like a, a dedicated page. Right. So this page a right page. here, yeah, th this page right here is just for, in this case, the sample business name I came up with, North 50 Gallery. Right. And so if they have events uploaded to our calendar, they can, that will automatically show up. Um, they can put all their contact information and social media accounts. They can upload numerous videos and photos and give a full length description. And uh, of course, business hours. And so, you know, for, for somebody who's just targeting um, Farmington and knowing that this is specifically in the, for the Farmington footprint, this is a really cost effective way to market just to them. I, I did, um, in two of our pilot uh, sites, we had um, two small businesses that were, um, one was a yarn shop, for example. And so sh she's not trying to market outside of her footprint. So sh for her to spend $250 a year for a website and spending, instead of spending thousands of dollars and, and having it be on the World Wide Web, you know, that, that's, a, that's a big difference. And uh, we were able to measure her impact for her, and she thought it was a good deal for her. So that's, that's, that's the economic development aspect of it, right? That's the business support that we put, put out there for the site. And, and so far, we've just spoken really about the, the places, but thinking about the business events that, that are, happen throughout town. Um, this section is the calendar, of course, and each one of these events has been submitted by a user of the site. Um, so it comes up in chronological order, of course. You know, um, it's not going to show last week's events. It's going to be you know, always updated automatically. Um, each of these uh, events get their own dedicated page as well, so it can be easily shared by social media by the organizer. Um, full description, you know, all the pertinent information, full description, contact info, the ability to get directions right from the page itself and uh, to uh, contact the organizer. Can, Evan, can you remind me now? Okay, so this is the beer tour. Remind me, okay, so one I of our, it. what? <laughs> 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 Where is it going to be? <laughs> <laughs> one of uh, our restaurants is having some kind of special, whatever that is. It's a, an event at their restaurant. Can they post something like this? Yes. So again, with the economic driver on this, it's not only they're having a spot on the web, that's, they can actually post their events on this. Exactly. And that's free for them. That's free for them right. to do. Exactly. And that, that was one of the limitations. We did, I think, as a town, such a great job updating our website. But at the end of the day, it's still a town website that you do business. You find out how to get your dog license or what's, when are the taxes, you know, what, where do you send your tax money, things that are very municipal in nature. But it really isn't appropriate uh, to say, you know, Cure is having uh, an open mic night and you're not going to put that on the community calendar on the town's website. But that might be something that a lot of people would love to know when there's an open mic. So uh, we are going to allow businesses to, to put their events. And the only caveat we're going to have is if, if a business is having, um, you know, let's say it's a yoga studio. And every Thursday they have, you know, yoga, a yoga class. Well, that's not going to appear, uh, you know, anything that's part of their normal routine of business won't appear. It's really when they might be having a free outdoor yoga in the park night then that would be inappropriate. And again, we will work with all the businesses to make sure they understand the um, And then, I, you may, I don't think you're going to, maybe you'll get to it, but one of the things when you described it to me, which I thought how that works, is that then for the resident, you can sign up for what kind of events you like, right? And then, so if you like yoga, and then the business, a, a yoga event comes up, then you get alerted of all the yoga events, right? Correct, so a, a key feature to a lot of you know, Facebook and Twitter is that it's actually curating the content based on your, your preferences. So the system will eventually recognize if you've been to an art event before, this user might be interested in future art events. 
So that actually takes me back to the home page where this is kind of like a digest of everything that's happening throughout the site, like the front page of a newspaper that shows the first, uh, first excerpt of each article and then you can click through if you're actually interested to read more. So we refer to this as, you know, we call it hyper relevant because right now this sidewalk art contest that's being promoted, the reason why it's showing up on the top is because this one happens to be happening in 37 minutes. In 38 minutes, this will no longer be on top, and something else that's more relevant at that moment in time will be on top. Oh, and so if you just before you, just so again, for staffing purposes, the computer does that automatically. It's not <laughs> yes. like our people are doing that for <laughs> staffing and everything like that. Correct. So it all just so I'm clear. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to automate as much as we possibly can. Okay. <laughs> just make it, as I said, hyper relevant. Um, yeah, and, and eventually we'll be able to tie into um, other other um, town features. For example, if there's, you know, if we can get sports, your local high school sports teams on there, and maybe you're not a parent and so you don't care about the high school sports, but if you are and your kids are in the high school sports, yes, maybe we should put that feed directly in here. And um, we can connect to any local news source. And what's... You know, some people might think I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot by allowing this to be on our site because you work so hard to get people on your site. Why are you immediately sending them off? But Rose said it's not it's not a municipal website. It's, it's more of a lifestyle platform for the town. And so if we can if we can just stay relevant and and show things that are actually helpful and applicable to each user and have that be an independent you know personal experience, I think that this would become a hugely advantageous uh, resource for everybody who either lives here or works here or visits here. What is your marketing plan? I mean, you had a huge success of 68% of these towns within a year going on your site. Yeah. How do you make the majority of farmers know that this exists so they get on the first couple of times? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the, the most, um, the, the platform that we leveraged a lot for getting that number was Facebook. And this, yeah, and, and that's why we created our own Facebook page. And so Facebook, of course, has adoption that, you know, we're not trying to replace f Facebook for Farmington residents here. You know, it, it's in our, in our belief to not try to, you know, change the ecosystem on people. People will not change ecosystems. They're not going to all of a sudden give up Facebook. So we use Facebook, and we, make a, a, we made our own Facebook page. And a few events that were uploaded, for instance, the... Uh, in Torrington, they were redoing the fireworks. They were having the fireworks show, and they hadn't had it for so long. So we made a big deal about it. You know, it's a community event, um, and, and it's a it's a large event. So we we spent 30 bucks on Facebook to promote this post, and it linked right back to our site. So that generated a lot of oh, what else is on this page? And then so they would they would browse through it. Um, but we also did the traditional methods. We had a we had a really fun launch party. Um, we invited press. You know, we did press releases. We um, I sent emails out to the business owners I knew in town and uh, the list that we got from the town to communicate with them and say, hey, this is here for you. And I, generally, I think people are just hungry for this kind of info. And if you're showing businesses, hey, advertise yourself here for free, we're, we're exactly targeting your footprint. They're and not here's, yeah. No, they're not yeah, they take it. Now, Amy, it's funny because that was. That continues to be my question at every weekly meeting. <laughs> How do we make sure that everyone's going to know about this and be able to use it? And so um, the girls are assuring me that's not going to be a problem. Because, <laughs> but I, you know, I had to like prove it to myself. So we did one. I did a post on my LinkedIn page. That, I mean, I've had LinkedIn for I don't know how long, and I barely use it. So I went ahead and I did a pose. The girls helped me with it. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. In three days, LinkedIn sends me a little report. 1,500 people have seen your post. I mean, how could that be? And, but that's how quickly it happens. So, and it got reposted and reshared or whatever, all the things that it did. And so it's funny because now more people are, um, you know, are saying, oh yeah, I, I've heard about Explore Farmington. Mm -hmm. And we can, and one of the other very <coughs> uh, cool tools that this particular website has, it will be able to give us reports how many people are, are visiting the site? Who's visiting the site? The businesses will be able to get that information. Right. Yeah. And, um, and if you're a business that submitted an event, you can see how many people went to see that event or how many right. people clicked yeah. on your profile page. So we're also giving valuable metrics to them as well. 
and lo more long term to answer your question, um, fortunately for uh, initiatives like this, these local based initiatives, companies like Google really favor the local results. So assuming that that makes it more relevant for people doing a search for something as vague as even if they're on their cell phone and they're in Farmington, they Google events, our site will tend to come up because we are we have uh, uh, content that's always being updated, so we look relevant, and we are right there, you know, in the, in the area, the geographical area that the person is conducting that search in. All these things are taken into account for Google, and fortunately, they really favor local-based initiatives. So showing up for vague searches like that is also part of the marketing strategy as far as I'm concerned. Now, what determines a business? Like, for instance, is it brick and mortar only? Is it in home businesses? Or if, you know, Joe's got a summer landscaping company that he wants to make a couple hundred bucks on? Yeah, one of those edge cases is those businesses that are service-based and don't necessarily have a storefront that they want to promote. Um, what we are going to, this isn't implemented for, ver for version one right now, but what we're going to implement is to have a, um, they're going to be included in the directory, but not, not pinpointed on the map. So if somebody is still doing a search for, for lawn service, it will still come up, but it won't be a pin on the map. It will just be a listing for them. And now what if Joe goes off to college and no longer has the lawn service? Yeah, this is where the, the value of the curators come in and the, and the fact that um, we have local people here who would have their... The, uh, they would be tapped into that kind of uh, update. If they know a store closes, I wouldn't know, but they probably would. So yes, there's going to be some irre irrelevant stuff that, that hangs out there, but we have people who are constantly on it trying to improve that, and that's miles ahead of a printed directory, for example. So. It will be linked on um, the Farmington site, correct? Be oh, yes, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. That, that's a great and we're also going to link our town site on, on here, too. Other questions or comments? So tell all your friends. <laughs> like us on Facebook. Yes, like us on Facebook. Look at our Instagram account. Okay. <laughs> notifications every time an account is made too, so I'll know. Oh. Uh-oh. So Rose, we are signed up, but it's not yes. launched until November 1st. Right. So everyone, we're going to, um, so you guys are signed up now. So what does that mean? You have an account. If you have a business and you wanted to go ahead and, and fill out your information about your business, then it's going to be on our map. And we're gonna, that's what we're going to do for the next month. Really tell all the businesses, help them sign up. Because what we want to do on November 1st, we're, there's going to be an event that we're partnering with the Farmington Library. And it's um, highlighting, they have a wonderful resource for all businesses. It's called their A to Z database. And so anyone who has a Farmington Library card right now is able to go online and receive all the information of every single business, not only in Farmington, but in Connecticut. I think it's in the whole US. And that database is an extremely expensive tool if you, were, if you wanted to, to get that information yourself. So Farmington Library has had that available for a number of years. So they partnered uh, with us, and they are going to be having a speaker come on November 1st to tell businesses all about this database. And then after that, um, during that program, we are then going to um, tell everybody there that we're live, and by that time we'll have all our press releases, everyone will know. So we really, for the next month, really have to work very, very hard, and we hope we can count on you to tell all your friends, because once that November 1st uh, launch date, then the, the whole site will be populated with businesses and events, and people will start using it. Yeah, and that's always a big surge, obviously. Right when we launch, everybody wants to go check it out. So it's, you know, to have your stuff on there for them to see when they get there is advantageous for you. And uh, keeping in mind that this is, um, you, were, you were mentioning the annual fee, the, this is a, a, a web application that we are continuously improving and making new features for. And what we have slated for um, probably middle of next year is to, to begin working on the, the mobile application. 
So <coughs> it, it's mobile ready now. It will work. Uh, this this website will work just fine on your uh, on your mobile device. But we'll also have a native mobile app that we can uh, have users utilize. And then I think it's going to be more utilized on a mobile platform than it is on a website. You know, that's that's the trend. That's what the truth is now. So. Um, and to think of uh, what we can do in terms of improving the context of things by knowing where, you know, if you're standing here and you're doing a search for coffee, you know, it'll show you around where you are, the coffee places around you. And if you give each of those business owners who own coffee shops in town the ability to edit their listing and to promote their business through that and to see how many people are actually finding you that way, you know, I think it's going to be really um, a step in the right direction in terms of uh, getting the visibility up for all the wonderful things that are already happening here. And they see that because each business has its own dashboard, or how do they get access to that information? Show them that. Yeah, actually, right here, um, the, the where you, actually you have access to this part. There's um, you know, when you submit your events and you submit your businesses, you'll have all of your um, uh, pieces of content here, so that you can, if you change your phone number, you can edit it yourself. If, if you uh, need to cancel an event, you could do so yourself. So it's constant. It's something you can constantly manage and keep keep up to date as the business owner. So they have burgers, beer, cocktails at Torrington City Hall. Rose, why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you ever leave? Oh, all this sample content that I made, I should probably look through that a little closer. <laughs> We've been having a lot of fun with our own content, <laughs> testing it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yes, you have. I've been <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Well, okay. thanks well, for thank your time. You very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank All you. of you for thank getting you. this underway. <clears throat> very exciting. Okay. Now we'll go back to state budget. <laughs> D2, presentation of state budget update. So um, there isn't any change in the state budget situation since we last reported to the council a week ago. Um, so we don't really have anything to report. We're hoping that something's gonna happen. I mean, obviously very soon. I'm not thinking that's going to be the case, but um, you know, the drop dead date for a lot of municipalities with their large amount of funding that they're supposed to receive is October 1st. So I know that the group has been, at least what I've been reading in the paper, they would like to do something, but you know, it's been very silent as you probably have been reading the paper over the last week. I think they're going to have some, hopefully maybe doing some different things with the hospitals uh, tomorrow. But other than that, um, really we don't have anything else to report, but we will, if anything of significance, we will definitely be talking about it at our next council meeting, and if we need to meet before then, we'll, we'll, I'll talk to Nancy about that. Okay. Yeah, we just had uh, just a little update today that they were talking about the hospitals. They came on, <clears throat> um, and they were hoping, I guess they were discussing how they would, they hope to finish Friday. It would have to be by sundown. Um, so that's still an option, but how serious that is, who knows. Um, and I'm actually going into Krog tomorrow at noon for executive meeting, so we'll see if there's any discussion in, in Hartford then. So um, we'll keep everybody posted. And uh, I just uh, left at your uh, places, just uh, I think, Amy, you had asked me a question about that. So we're, we're going to be uh, looking at some of our revenue and some different things. There's a lot of information, and it's, again, it's, it's, we, we have a pretty good database on our grants and our revenue too, but sometimes it's, it's difficult because a lot of revenue is one-time revenue that we right. happen to get. Like, so if we have a Rails to Trails grant, it comes in that year. And so there's, there's different things that ha have happened. But I think the one thing you can take out of my chart is that over the last couple of years, the, the state funding has been very unpredictable. And that hasn't usually been the case. It usually has been that uh, we go with the governor's numbers, and the numbers are usually better than that. Um, but that has not been the case over the last uh, two budget cycles for us. So, but we've been looking at this chart. I mean, the total revenue exceeding budget, and for the past five years, we've been in, in good shape. 
Yes. And that yeah. all is going into fund balance, right? Right. So yeah. that's helped us bring that number up. Right. I mean, and that's, that's actually extremely positive. Yeah. And that's been, a, as you guys know, is that's been a very deliberate effort oh, yeah. on our part to raise the, the fund balance. And also, um, you know, there has been different things where we've had different revenue sources and we've had some uh, pretty good property tax collection rates and some mm -hmm. various things. And we do, in general, fund our um, revenues very conservatively. Any Thank other you. questions? Okay, thanks, Kathy. Uh, E1. I move to approve the attached resolution concerning a lease purchase agreement for the acquisition and conversion of various streetlights throughout the town. Second. And I left the attached resolution um, at your places. Um, and Joe, where's Joe? Joe, could you maybe give us an update on this? How this resolution? how we're going to finance this. Um, as you probably recall, uh, earlier this year, or in the spring, you, you authorized the acquisition and conversion of our, our street lights, and that's being negotiated now with Eversource. Um, it hasn't been finalized. I guess the contract hasn't uh, come through yet. In the meantime, we indicated that we would be acquiring or paying for this whole project through lease financing. Um, we went out to bid or sought proposals for lease financing. We opened them on September 15th, and we received uh, some pretty good rates. We hit it just right, and uh, TD Bank actually came in with the low rate at the um, 1.8, it was 1.87 um, percent. Um, we. We're running this by our bond council right now to make sure that the financing, what they're proposing in their, in their package, their financing package is, is, is doable and acceptable. Um, and what you have, I, unfortunately, you have two resolutions. In the original packet, we gave it a very abbreviated resolution. Um, bond council felt that that wasn't an adequate resolution, so they, he, he rewrote the resolution, added some um, items to it. It still has the gist of what you have in your sh abbreviated res resolution. It just clarifies our intent in terms of um, this, res this lease financing being inc um, subject to, um, um, inc not being subject to income tax. It, it is a tax exempt uh, financing, and indicating the town's intent to possibly advance the funds for the project and then get the money back through the lease financing. We will not do that, but he did leave that open to for us in there. Um, so basically, he, what he did is he took the resolution and he, he made it into what we would normally you would normally pass for bond resolution. That's really what it does. Um, so I apologize. There was some confusion. I didn't think he was going to um, make that many changes because I thought it was a simple lease financing. He decided that because of the dollar amount, the million dollars, um, it, we should add more to it, and that's basically why he expanded on it. So. Um, if you have any questions about the, the lease financing in particular, it is um, seven years. We talked about either five or seven years. It works at the payback works better on a seven year basis, so this would be a seven year financing. It is a million dollars. Um, there is a prepayment penalty, but we wouldn't we would not pay back on this anyway. Um, and we eventually what would happen is the savings from the electricity savings would and uh, would actually pay back the lease itself. Right. So. The whole premise, again, which we talked about a few meetings ago, was that we would be purchasing the street lights. <clears throat> We're going to lease right. finance them. Right. The, the money, the, the savings from the street lights, uh, the electricity is going to pay for um, it after seven years. We're, and then we're also going to have uh, savings. Right. The, that we're going to be putting into the budget over the course of, you know, the 20 years, right? There should, in theory, in theory, you should have savings over the next 20 years yeah. of, of, of quite a, of several million dollars. Um, basically, what you're you're doing is there, there's two functions, two poor, uh, two um, sources of savings. Um, street lights, unlike your lights, the electricity you pay for, you pay two charges to for your for um, street lights. You're paying for the maintenance of the lights from Eversource, and that's one rate, and then you pay your electricity rate. So, and, and actually there's three, three payments, the delivery to Eversource, the maintenance of the lights from Eversource, and then the, um, and then the electrical rate, the actual supply rate. 
So what you're doing by buying the lights is you're taking the maintenance out of the factor out of it. Then what you're doing by converting the lights to LED is you're saving money on the electricity costs. So um, what you're looking at is the potential of going from $150,000 a year in, in electricity or payments on street lights every year to about um, $60,000 a year. So you, you should see considerable savings. Over the first seven years, that's, that savings is going to go back into paying the lease. But once the seven years are up, you're, you'll have, you know, that savings will just be coming back to the town. Do you wanna... Right, and uh, we had a question during public comment, and I think uh, Shannon has the information. So if I don't know if you've met with Shannon, but we can go through a list of questions. And I know you and I are meeting tomorrow, so we could talk about that. Any questions for Joe? Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Great. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Kathy. Okay. Um, and I have a motion to move to executive session. I move to executive session to discuss matters concerning the sale or acquisition of real property and that attendance in the executive session shall be limited to members of the town council, William Wadsworth, land acquisition committee member, and the town manager at 8.05 p.m. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions.